So, let me now jump to the case of or go to the case of two discrete random variables, right. And it is always better to think start with some omega. So, you it is always even though you can say well later on you can sort of dispense with this omega in some sense and do, do, do a direct uh, specification uh, in which case right you do not talk of, of an underlying experiment, for, but for the time being let, let the omega come into the picture because it is very important right now. So, we are interested in of course, uh, we are not jumping into the continuous case right now, we are still going to stick to discrete right. We are interested in the joint behavior of two discrete random variables that is very important right. What is the probability that x will take some value and, and y will take some other value at the same time jointly as a joint event that is what we want and it turns out this joint event is the key to understanding the joint statistics of two discrete random variables. You do not look at x and y in isolation you look at them together and so the specification will need something more much stronger than just a simple univariate PMF right. Whatever we have talked about so far the PMFs are all univariate they, they just depend on one random variable. So, this is going to take us to the bivariate to two you know PMF with this joint to uh, bivariate PMF. So, how, uh, how do these arise I mean uh, clearly we will look at some many examples, but but uh, just let me do an abstract thing right. Supposing I have some omega here I have let us say it is a discrete omega just for simplicity right I am the same idea will apply even when omega is continuous, but to, uh, so the uh, basic thing sinks in right. So, I have two axes here that define x and y. So, these are the names of my random variables x and y right. I have I have already said in some previous lecture that you can define more than one random variable on, on, a, on, a, on a sample space right. I am pretty sure I said it right if I did not if it is not if I if the if my the significance of that did not sink in then let it sink in now right. It is clearly possible to define many many random variables depending on the experiment. I think I did say it yesterday right. If I pick a person at random there are many umpteen numbers that a person carries around and each of them is a separate random variable. So, we are only interested now in the case of a discrete sample space omega and two, two random variables x and y. So, this is a point omega uh, consider any, any uh, sample point small omega in capital omega right. Uh, by the mapping right x mapping it maps to this is x of omega and this is y of omega right. This is by definition right if you define two random variables and clearly both x of omega and y of omega must be defined and both of these are numbers. So, this is an, a number axis this is, this is a real line this is another real line. Now, what you are going to do is look at the collection of all these pairs of points what is that and the commonality I mean the fact that these two are not happening separately, but happening together whenever you observe this sample point small omega you are going to observe this value this is going to be the output for x and this is going to be our output for y you have no choice in that. If you pick a person at random you cannot say I am going to pick the height of this person and the weight of that person that that is completely wrong you have to go with that omega if you look at joint behavior. So, let this sink in again it is very 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 crucial right this without this understanding your whole uh, uh, you cannot understand how two random variables behave right. The fact is that you are looking at jointly what values they take not not just separately. If you, as I said you can also close your eyes to y and only look at x that is back to the univariate situation we have been talking about, uh, talking about all this while, but we need to make the conceptual jump now to uh, 2. So, this is 
right one joint pair this is another joint pair which I am just leaving and then you can have one more here. So, if you collect all these for the discrete case you if you collect all these all these pairs of points and point the, and put them on the plane what will you get? You will get a countable collection of points in the x y plane. So, this is small x and y. So, this will be what possible values of or let me just write this as the collection of x of omega right and this will be and because I am viewing it as countable sets I can use this uh, this uh, braces notation right. So, the collection of x of omega um, so the, if I therefore put a point here this is going to be I have the coordinates x of omega y of omega. Now, let us say I do it for all possible points. So, what will I get? I will get some some grid, some collection of points which in many cases falls on a nice grid, some integer grid may be. Right? So, this collection of points right is the fundamental starting point for studying the joint behavior of x and y. Note we cannot look at just the point you know, the values of x alone or the values of y alone you have to look at and you cannot associate this x coordinate with the y coordinate of this point. So, that is why it is better in the beginning to not to draw it as a regular grid, but to randomize it enough so that right you realize that this point is uniquely specified by this value that x takes and that uh, and the value that y takes. This is clear to everybody. Has anyone, does anyone have any questions? Remember, once again, last time I will say you cannot combine arbitrarily combine the x coordinate of one point and the y coordinate of another point. That makes that completely violates the whole mathematical structure of what, what we are trying to do. Okay. So, this is the set omega, what we are going to call as omega x y. This is a countable subset of. of the plane and the plane we write as r squared. <coughs> the line is r power 1 or just r right the plane is r squared. What is omega x y? Omega x y is a cap is a set of all possible values that x and y can take jointly. So, how did I write it here? Let me since I have already written it and brought it here I do not want to I, I just want to you know for the sake of this just uh, so, um, just write it as x okay. mm -hmm. does not matter. So, maybe I would not write it here because it is not it is possible that it might get not come out so well in the video. So, omega x y is essentially defined to be x omega y omega for all omega small omega and capital omega just think of it like this this is a qualifier colon some people use a small vertical line here but since we've been using vertical lines for conditional probabilities i'm using a colon colon is also used as often as i as a vertical line here so you you look at you vary this uh, omega a small omega for all points you look at jointly what happens to x and and y. So, this is starting point for this joint specification and when the sample space is this when, when capital omega sorry which I um, okay, I have written it here when when the underlying sample space is, is discrete there is no way that this omega x y is going to be anything other than countable it has to be countable right. How many points supposing I have n points here I can only get n totally n points here I cannot get more I can get less but I cannot get more ok. If I have a countable infinity of points here I may be 
able to get accountable infinity that is a different issue right. But basically there is you, you can say a one to one correspondent I mean they can maximally a one to one mapping between these omegas and these points. So, so omega x y has to be countable. So, what about the probability now right. So, supposing this is the point you know instead of writing capital X uh, omega y omega we need to have some more notation for, <coughs> for the point. So, now supposing you consider consider some x y a point x y in in that set. Right? You consider this point x y in that set. So, then you look at the joint probability that, x, that of, of x taking the value x and y taking the value y right jointly. So, that is the if you repeat that over all these points x y you get the joint PMF of x and y. and you indicate the two random variables with a comma right. This is the probability that x so it is a joint event right. And you repeat it for all you do this if you write out these probabilities for all x y in in the countable subset omega x y. If you do that you specify the joint PMF of x and y. Okay. So, what properties do you have now? So, that it implies that the, the this uh, p x y has to be between although you can say why should it be 0 it obviously I mean we are uh, anyway let us not split hairs over it but let us say it can take you know you you it can go up to 0 and up, up you know up to y equal to 1 also does not make any sense but does not matter we will just put it here. So, but uh, um, okay this and this summation over all and I want to write it as a single summation now dot not double summation. If I add it over all points omega of small x y I will get what? I should get I should get 1. In other words if I go here and look at the probability of this point plus probability of this plus probability of this they all uh, must add up to one they all have to be non negative they have to add, add up to one. So, the, these are the basic uh, rules with which we operate what the, and again the meaning of this p x y x comma y note note the, the notation you write the random variables uh, subscripts in some order right and I am going to dispense with the comma in between some people I put a comma here I am not going to put that comma right just x y. If I have three random variables right I can write them as x y z or x 1 x 2 x a whatever without commas. Then I have a, the same number of arguments as I have random variables and the first argument is the value taken by the first random variable the second one by the second random variable the subscript and so on that is the convention that we use right. And this again is a joint event always this event is independent uh, sorry is exclusive of any other point right. x y x 1 y 1 is obvious automatically exclusive of x 2 y 2 or x 1 y 2 assuming that x 1 y 2 is also in the set. So, if you have a regular grid obviously you will uh, you will uh, 
you will you can draw a vertical line and or a horizontal line you will find more than one point on that on any given vertical or horizontal line right in supposing it is an integer grid as we will see just we do do an example I am running out of time we will pick it pick up the example uh, in, my, in Tuesday's class right. But uh, for now x 1 y 1 is unique by itself or is, is an entity by itself right it is exclusive of x 1 y 2 or y 1 uh, or x 2 y 1 or any other point. And we are interested in this joint probability always, right? The starting point is the we have x and y jointly taking values dot set. Idea is they jointly take values in the countable set <coughs> of the plane. Right, R squared is the x y plane and omega x y is the set in which they take uh, uh, they, uh, they take values and the key point is omega x y has to be countable right. There are only finite number of points in that sorry countable number of points in that set. You cannot have for example the, uh, uh, the whole unit square 0 1 for example that would be straight away an uncountable number of points okay. So, right, so this is omega x y and then you have the, the joint, so the joint PMF is basically joint PMF is a collection of joint probabilities. What uh, these are all joint probabilities of the type of what events x equal to x, y equal to y and y equal to y for all x y pairs inside omega x y. In other words, I the notation we write p x y x comma y is the probability of this event right. Any, any questions on this? This is very, very, very crucial definition right. So, this is our atomic event now regarding these <laughs> random variables x and y and we are looking at this joint probability x takes the value x and y taking the value y. Remember when you do the experiment or when you have uh, one run uh, you must get a value of x and you must get a value for y. So, it, it, this kind of joint event is obviously what we should be looking at. So, if you go back to that picture which we drew we have a point small omega and capital omega which is mapped to one point for x and a, a different point for y and you are looking at when that point omega occurs that x and y occur together. So, that is the joint event that this that this is. Uh, note also you can get multiple points in capital omega mapping to the same value x and y that is entirely possible. As, okay. So, I think the best thing to do is to uh, look at some simple examples. Let me make sure that I, uh, yes, I, 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 I think we are ready to look at examples, no point in rehashing. So, if you do this, uh, right, the joint PMF, uh, okay, I have to sp complete the mathematical specification, I will do that and then we'll go, go to the examples. So, if you do this for all points x, y in omega x, y, then you have specified the joint PMF. So, what are the properties of the joint PMF? It is basically a collection of jo pro joint probabilities. So, so, the double summation of omega p of x y must be equal to well or single summation I do not know maybe last week I wrote it as a single summation, but it is sometimes right written as a double summation it does not matter. So, this is for if you add it uh, right if you add all these probabilities you must get 1. So, that is the most important uh, I mean that is uh, the <coughs> key idea that you have not left anything out no uh, possibility with finite probability must be left out in the specification of the joint PMF. Obviously, each of these probabilities must be between 0 and 1 also.